Hi, I'm Wallace Kelly, and today I'm going to show you how to create a .NET DLL, a .NET class library. I'm going to show you how to move files into that .NET DLL so that you can call it from another project, how you would add a project reference to a class library, and lastly, we'll look at the issue of class accessibility, which is how we expose our code from one assembly to another. So to illustrate all this, we're going to use this little project called ex uh, Executable. And when I run the project, you can see that it outputs the folders in my documents and then a little information about those folders. And to implement that, I've got two classes here, Folder Browser and Folder Info. And these classes are gen general purpose. I could use them in other projects, and so that's what I want to do. I want to take them out of this console application and move them into a DLL, move them into a library so that they can be called from another project. So to do that, I'm going to right click on my solution and say add new project. And I'm going to add a project of type class library. And I can simply just call it class library. And the Visual Studio template for a class library includes one file called class1.cs. Uh, you're welcome to start with that. I don't, I'm not going to use it, and uh, so I'm going to just delete that. I don't need it. But if I rebuild this now, rebuild this class library, I want to see what is being produced by this executable. And so to do that, I'm going to use this little button up here called Show All Files. I use this all the time. Uh, it's often overlooked, but uh, it's very handy. If you click on that, then it'll show you the files from on your file system that aren't even part of your project. And so this is, you can see in my bin debug folder, I have a class library.dll. Nothing's in there yet, so let's move two pro, uh, full, uh, files, these two classes, I want to move them over into my class library. In Visual Studio, I can simply move it. You can do it on the hard drive and then add an existing file or whatever. And so I've moved them over to my class library, removed them from my executable. Now, once I put them in a class library, a lot of times you're going to want to customize that namespace. So we might call this our uh, lib, might be learning lib, uh, learn, uh, learning line dot lib might be the name of your namespace. So I'll just rename those namespace. And now if I build this again and then look down here, you can see that there's my class library dot DLL. All right. So now. If I go to execute this project, if I go to build my executable, you'll see that it no longer has any reference to folder info. It no longer knows what a folder info or a folder browser are because they're in this other class library. And the, the error message is instructive. It says the type or namespace folder info could not be found. Are you missing a using directive or an assembly reference? And in this case, I'm missing an assembly reference, meaning that my executable doesn't have a reference to my new class library. You'll remember that a that your projects store references underneath this reference folder. And here are listed the standard .NET assemblies that are included by default when you create, in this case, a console application. What's not here is a reference to my new class library. So I'm going to right click on uh, that folder references say add references and you'll notice here that we have five tabs for net references com references projects references browse references and recent ones so i could browse because we know that that net dll was generated i could browse down to class library bin debug and have a hard-coded link to the class library file uh, that works, but it's not the best way to do it. In this case, since I'm the owner of this class library project, it's best to create a project reference. And the idea here is that Visual Studio will keep track of what is the output of this other project and then have a reference to whatever the output is. The advantage of that is that if I rename class library to class lib, then I don't have to come in and change my hard-coded reference. Also, if I change configuration, do a release build, then I'll get the release version of class library and so forth. So if we have the source and we want to include the source in our project, we generally always include a project reference rather than browsing for it. So now you'll see that here in my executable, I have a class library, uh, reference to class library, but you'll also see that my project, my my source still doesn't compile and it says the type or namespace folder info cannot be found and so we've already added an assembly reference but what we haven't done 
is adding a using directive. Because you'll remember that I, I put those classes in a different uh, namespace. So now I can add the lib namespace, and then sure enough, these types are going to turn cyan once I rebuild. Ah, no, it won't. That's right. And that's the last item that we need to mention here. So we've seen how creating a DLL, moving the files into that DLL, adding a project reference, but then the question of class accessibility. So let's look at the error that we're getting now. Learning line lib, uh, learning line .folder info is inaccessible due to its protection level. Is inaccessible due to its protection level. And this is referring to the fact that if I come over here and look at folder info, you'll see that the class by default is internal. You'll remember that the members inside the class can be public and private and so forth, but the class itself can also have an accessibility level. And in this case, the default is internal, which means that the folder, that this class, folder info, is only accessible inside this assembly. It's only accessible from other code inside the same DLL. In fact, if I jump over to folder browser, you'll see that folder info, it's cyan there, because I'm inside the same DLL, and so it's, it is able to access that, access that. To make folder info accessible outside of the DLL, then I also have to mark it as public. So I make folder info public. I'm going to make my new folder browser, which I is now in my DLL, make it public, like so. Then we finally come back, and now our program.cs compiles. All right. So what we've seen is that you can create a .NET DLL by adding a new project of type class library. Uh, you can create new classes in that class library. You can add an existing item to that class library. You can even drag and drop items into that DLL. To reference the code in that DLL, you add a project reference to it, and that's what we did right here. And then lastly, we saw that when you're trying to call code inside a DLL, you're only able to access the code that is public. By default, classes are internal, so you have to mark them as public to make them accessible. All right, I hope that was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.